It is my pleasure to welcome you all into this session as part of the 12th conference for English teachers teaching English during COVID-19. Thank you for your participation. I am honored to introduce Master Milton Raul Licona. He started a bachelor program in English language teaching at Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Hidalgo. He also holds a master's degree in applied linguistics, graduated from Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León in Monterrey, Mexico. Currently, he works as a professor at Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Hidalgo in Pachuca, Mexico. With you, Master Milton Raúl Licona. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me over. Um, thank you to uh, Universidad Pedagógica Nacional Francisco Morazán. Uh, thanks for the invite and, and for letting me share my experiences here with you in the 12th International Conference for Teachers of English. Um, this goes by the name language teaching during COVID-19, which is pretty ad hoc to our times, right? Um, well, my name is Milton Licona. I'm from Mexico. You might have heard or seen this information before, but just real quick, um, I'm from Mexico and I hold a bachelor's degree in English language teaching, as well as a master's degree in applied linguistics by Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León in Monterrey in Mexico. Uh, so let me go ahead and jump right in my presentation. There are many things that I would like to share with you. So welcome to this workshop session in which um, uh, we're going to cover, um, I'm going to cover a, um, a topic which might be really useful for you. It might be really useful for your students as well in terms of learning. Um, and uh, whatever I'm talking about today is games in the classroom. Um, now there are, there's a variety of, um, <clears throat> approaches or perspectives to uh, have games in the classroom. Uh, one of these is gamification. Uh, we also have game-based learning, uh, psychology of play, psychology of games in the classroom. Uh, all of them uh, refer to more or less the same thing, but they do have you know, different characteristics. Today, um, we are having the spotlight on gamification. Um, so before going over, let, let's take uh, some seconds to think about uh, what pops up in your mind whenever you think of this word, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, this word gamification. Um, so what is it that, that you can think of? All right, something real quick, you might have thought about it. I'm going to show you um, some of the answers of other teachers and, and you might have thought <clears throat> something similar or probably even the same. So um, according to th these other teachers that I asked to, um, they said when they heard the word gamification, they think obviously about games, they think about fun, creativity, uh, about something motivating, interactive, obviously, dynamic. They think they thought about strategies. Maybe some of you thought about this, which is something really nice to think of, and something attractive. Okay, so if you're moving, if you thought about something moving along these lines, you are in the same wavelength. Um, and yes, some of these things have to do with gamification, obviously, and uh, we're going to take a look at a, a, a deeper look um, in a little bit. Um, now, let's take a look at um, uh, 
right? <clears throat> Let's take a look at, uh, at an actual um, definition of what gamification is, and this according to DCHEF and DCHEVA. Um, so in order for, for me to provide uh, the different resources of gamification for you to understand, and first off, we have to go through some theoretical background to understand it better, okay? So according to uh, DCHEV and DCHEVA, gamification of education is a developing approach for increasing learners' motivation and engagement by incorporating game design elements in educational environments, okay? Um, again, uh, we are focusing this time around in. Uh, uh, things that have to do with technology, because most of us teachers, at least here in Mexico, we are still working um, online with students. So all of the things that we do is through uh, technology. Okay, so in this case, we're going to be taking a look at yes gamification with technology. All right, so in a few words, in a few words, we can uh, pretty much say that uh, is uh, basically gamification is applying game-like elements to an academic context in order for you to achieve a uh, learning goal on your students, right? Um, now, um, in here, we have game-like elements. So this means that we have uh, different uh, that we need to incorporate different things or different elements that you can find in a game. So think about different games and, and, and try to, to come up with uh, one word or two um, that may relate to this. So think about elements, game-like elements that you can incorporate in your classes. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. All right, probably you already have your answers. One or two words um, about game-like elements that you may apply in the classroom. And now I'm going to show you, uh, let's take a look at what some teachers uh, said in a previous survey that I made, okay? Probably it's something similar to what you have just thought, okay? All right, so this was the, the, the question that I made to them. Which game-like elements can you think of? one or two words, and here are some of their answers. All right, here they are. So we can see immediate feedback, a point system, interaction, again, feedback, leaderboards, rewards, connectors, competition, Achieving levels, all right, this is a good one, levels, again, participation, uh, discovering levels, all right, so you might have thought of something similar like this, and, and yes, some of these elements can be included in our classes in order for us to um, have, uh, to incorporate gamification. Now, there are many things that are already pre-made that teachers do use and they count as gamification in a way, yes, such as Kahoot. If you think of Kahoot, and I think that that is a very um, attractive platform and uh, it, it, is, it has been used for many teachers, not only during this COVID-19 uh, period, but in pre-pandemic uh, periods as well, I do remember that uh, some of my colleagues at the university and myself, we had used a Kahoot at some point. And Kahoot has some elements that are game-like elements. Um, so this counts as gamification in a way, okay? Now, these are some of the um, game-like elements that you may want to incorporate into your classroom to make it, uh, to have this gamification approach. You can have missions, 
You can have quests or challenges, leading boards, badges or cards, avatars, levels, rewards such as coins or stars or points, a life bar like the one we have up here, right? Or a progress bar. It can be a life bar or a progress bar. Um, now, um, do remember again that we are focusing on um, we're focusing on all of um, the elements that we can incorporate for gamification in the classroom but using technology yes you may apply some of these uh, things some of these game like elements in your regular classroom so you can uh, come up with a leading board that you can have on your wall and have different stickers in it for each of the students but again we're focusing on um the pandemic times and uh, things that have to do with technology so be aware that uh this is what we're doing okay all right so yes these are some of the elements that, that you that you should be incorporating if you want to make it more attractive if you want to have this gamification approach now, be really, really careful, you guys. Uh, um, sometimes teachers have games in the classroom, but just with no objective, just to play, just to have fun, just to uh, entertain your students. I guess it's okay from time to time to do so, but in overall terms and for gamification, the goal is not the game. All right, it's not the game itself, but instead the goal is having an academic objective to engage students through a different learning, through a different learning experience, which is um, all of these elements that you are going to put together for them. Okay, so yes, you probably are going to have a game or something that looks like a game, but this is not the goal. The goal is not for them to have fun. It's part of it, yes, but the actual goal is to uh, have your academic objective and to achieve your academic objective through all uh, through a different experience than the typical one all right so let's be really careful with that um and this is um, actually something that um, uh, is advised by dr uh holly lotgate who is the director of uh, the learning emerging technologies from cell university in florida uh I recently had um, a, a look at some of her work with gamification and, and all of these topics that, that are also related with technology. Uh, and and she's, she, she said this, and, and I think it was wonderful because indeed many of the times us teachers uh, do different activities or different games with no purpose. So let's take a, 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 a um, Let's take our, our job a little bit more seriously. And yes, let's have fun. Let's uh, have some uh, game-like elements or even games, because I will show you how to create a game later on in the session. But do not lose your focus. Your focus is the learning objective, that your students learn something, to review something, okay? to have a product. All right. <clears throat> With that being said, now let's take a look at um, some um, ideas um, that are suggested in this case. Um, these were found in teachthought.com and it says 10 ways to make learning more like a game. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but this is just for you to have an idea. Okay, so it says create students is create a student designers. He said to immerse students in gamification and start by allowing them to create the narrative of their class, okay? So they can participate on what is it uh, that they want it to be done. Even if you ask them to create a video game, they make their own narrative for that. And not just that, but if, uh, if we ask them to do that, we can also then go to, where is it? All right, it's not over here, it's in another one, but to create their own avatars, which is something they really, really enjoy. So they 
not only create their narratives, but they also create their own avatars and uh, they feel like they are this other character in, in, in which they can be probably more outgoing for those who, who are not. All right, so gamification allows second chances, okay? So it is not like in, in the regular classroom that they got a, um, an answer wrong and, and that's it. So in here, okay, so they got it wrong. They have a, a chance to, uh, to do it again and to choose another option or whatever. So it allows second chances. So probably the anxiety lowers a little. It promotes collaborative feedback, uses uh, use level, and progress bars, as I mentioned before, you can do it physically on your wall. You can uh, have uh, uh, something here uh, with technology, which is visual in which you, um, they can see the progress and everything. You introduce challenges right whenever you said, I have a challenge for you. Many of your students, you know, they're like this, they start paying attention. They're like, okay, so what is it that I have to do in order to, to win or in order to achieve whatever I have to achieve? They really like challenges. They really like uh, missions. So introduce some of these things. Um, you don't have to implement all of, all of these things, but you can pick one or two and see how it works with your students. All right. And then now for from uh, busyteachers.com, uh, we have how to gamify your ESL classroom. So let me go right over here for you to see it a little bigger. And again, you need to choose a goal, divide it into milestones. So break it down into different activities or different things that they have to do. Um, you can design a game board, okay, or you can create your own game as well. Um, oh, here it is, create avatars, and it says, how will students be represented in your game? Design avatars they can choose from or have them design their own, which they really love. Create badges. There's um, um, a web page for you to actually create badges or to create cards that students can collect through different uh, activities. Um, um, if I don't have the time to go over uh, all these different resources that I want to show you, for sure I will uh, make sure that I will send a PDF file with, with all of uh, the web pages that um, you can use to create your video game, to create your badges, to create your cards, um, and different things that are going to be really useful. Um, so uh, creating uh, badges for, for, the, for your students to earn, design leaderboards again, and consider playing in teams made for collaborative work, okay? So again, these are just some of the suggestions. Again, you don't have to take all of them, especially if you're new in this topic, because uh, yes, there are teachers who are already skillful with all of this uh, knowledge and all of these resources, and they might even take a whole module, a whole unit to be gamif gamified or a whole course. There are even schools in the United States that all of their um, uh, programs are based, uh, well, the, the, the teaching uh, things are uh, based on gamification, but this is a little too pro for us, probably many of us are, are barely learning some of this stuff. So go little by little, choose one thing or two, try it out. And if it doesn't work, incorporate more things or try some other things uh, that might be useful. Now, I do have to confess that me, myself, I'm not very, I'm not very keen on technology. I'm not really <laughs> skillful with technology, but I have, I had the, necess the necessity to go over and look for different things for my students because we cannot have the students uh, working with the same thing, uh, with the same PowerPoint presentation over and over again. It gets boring. Um, <clears throat> and in a way, it will affect, it affects for sure, uh, the, the learning experience, right? Okay. All right, so this is a QR code in case that you want to uh, keep this page for later, which is from Busy Teachers. 
uh, um, the graphic that I just shown. So you can just scan right over here this QR code and you can have it on your phone so you can take a look at it later, okay? All right. Now, this is uh, the Zammer or SAMR framework, uh, which displays four different degrees of integration of technology in the classroom. And this serves also for, uh, as we're working with gamification. So gamification with technology, these are four different levels that we can use in it as a theoretical framework, okay? Um, we have substitution, augmentation, modification and redefinition okay now let's take a closer look at these different levels so for substitution we have the technology acts as the substitution of traditional method and probably this is something that you may want to start with if you're not really skillful with uh, technology if you are barely wanting to try something out, then substitution is for you because it's not something really difficult. Pretty much you are just substituting whatever you used to do on a regular classroom with um, something technological and that looks better maybe. I'll show you some, uh, some uh, examples in a little bit. Uh, examples that I have applied in my classes in, at the university and that I believe they have been successful. Then we have <clears throat> augmentation. So in here, the technology acts as a substitution for a traditional method, but we have some improvements pro probably in the presenting or on the functioning, right? So uh, let's say that it's like substitution, but a little bit better. And then we have modification. So using technology to change or redesign previous methods. Now, this sounds like it's a little bit more complex and I do believe so, but the last one might be even more challenging, which is redefinition. And it says using technology to radically alter methods in a way previously not possible. I haven't got there, probably not even modification, but I'm telling you, it works very well whenever you are starting. Obviously, probably over time, you're going to be improving your skills, uh, but uh, whenever I'm sure you, you you will be able to get to modification or even redefinition, but it totally works with substitution and augmentation, all right? So for these, now it's time for me to show you some of the different things that I have done in my classroom, but well, most of the things, because there's one that I haven't tried out just yet. Um, and that you, you know, they, they, they may be useful for you, so. Let's talk about Powtoon. You may be familiar with it, you may be not. Uh, Powtoon is about different, uh, creating different videos, okay? So yes, uh, creating a video, it's most of the times um, uh, time consuming, and it's difficult. If you are not, again, if you're not familiar with technology, with programs, then it, it can be really a pain in the neck. Uh, so Powtoon offers you uh, different templates. So ready to use templates in order just for you to change some things, the content, so you can present it to your students. Uh, now, one thing that I need to clarify is that all of the options that I'm giving you, that I'm showing you uh, throughout these presentations, um, I'm using uh, the versions that are free because you know we teachers are not rich; we don't get enough money. So um, all of all of these uh, resources that I'm uh, sharing with you are for free. Yes, there are upgraded versions of them, but I'm using and everything I have done. It's, uh, it has been for free, so you don't need to pay for anything. Now, in the Powtoon uh, um, platform, uh, 
you cannot use all of their templates because you have to pay for all of them, but th there are plenty of them that can be of use. So how is it that you can use Powtoon for your classes? Now, uh, when I run into this uh, platform, I was thinking about how can I do something different for my students? So uh, I do remember that we were in the module, a unit that was about jobs, different jobs. And then at the end of the module, we have all the written part and it says, write a letter to blah, blah. And I'm like, man, maybe I can do something different. And in this case, I, what I did was a substitution from the regular task from the book. And what I did was a video in which I actually, uh, I found a really nice uh, template here in Powtoon. Uh, and, and I made it into a mission. So that's what I did. So if, if I had to choose a game like Element, then it was a mission. It was a mission. And uh, in terms of the frame, theoretical framework, it's substitution. I'm pretty much substituting whatever says the book they have to do with um, the technology involved, OK? So I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, and I hope you like it. All right, so as you can see, uh, I, I really love this video. As I mentioned before, this is a um, ready to use template. You just need to fill out the information that you want to, to have in there. I have my pictures right over here, and then I have the task for them to do that. Yes, it is a writing task. It doesn't really feel like it so far. And it goes, you will be exchanging jobs for a year, send them an email explaining what are um, your present job involves and etc. Okay, and then I go over and giving them the specifications. Obviously, in order for, for me to have the product that I want and, and that I need to check, I need to give them all of the things that they need to know about it. So, yes, I give them, uh, I tell them grammar is important, spelling is important, be aware of that, proofread. And also, if you need help here, if you take a look at your book, you can, you can see some, some of the things, right? <clears throat> All right, so 
in overall terms, this is what I did. As I mentioned before, this uh, counts as substitution. Um, I think it's a little bit more engaging than just having a task in your book that says, now write an email, blah, 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 right? Now, this is a different thing. I presented it differently, and uh, I was not expecting actually to, to even though even like the music, I think is very engaging and, you know, it's, it's a mission and everything. I was not really expecting students to get too excited about it. Um, now, the good thing is that, yes, some of them uh, were into the characters of or into the context of being in a mission. Uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of products that I got. So let's take a look at this one first. Right over here. All right. So starting from the name that this uh, student gave to to his uh, file it is classified and then he actually looked for an, an image and he had it as top secret i didn't ask for anything else other than them writing the email you know for the mission okay but you can see all of these other things that extra things that the student did is because he was probably more motivated because of, of, of the way it was presented in the video all right, so let's take a quick look at uh, the text. Dear Mr. Licona, I'm writing with regard to a video I received in which I have been told to contact you to go on a mission about exchanging jobs for a year. You have to make sure you pay close attention to the following specifications. So you see, even the vocabulary that uh, this person uses, uh, it's relatable to a mission, right? So I, I really enjoy uh, reading uh, these and, and and the thing that I actually like best is that this guy actually has a part time job after school and he related it, that job with the actual mission. So he's telling me the description about the things that if, if we exchange jobs, the things that I had to do in here. So it was great. Now. I'm going to show you another one that this is from another class, but it was about the same thing. So I had the video for them. I do remember it was really late at night when I was uh, when I started checking uh, their homework. So I started reading, and then I was very confused, and even I was on the point of getting really mad because I, this just made no sense. So this is. Uh, so this is the logo of the university, Instituto de Ciencias Sociales y Humanidades. But then this makes no sense. This is mission tax, gran pures. And I'm like, what is this? I said, like in the back of my mind, I was thinking this guy did not proofread. This guy did not double check and everything is misspelled. It's, it's just awful. So I was getting mad, right? And then I ran into this. So he has a code to the crypt. So all of his words are scrambled. And now I have to decipher because this is a mission. Now, if you can see here as a watermark, he also has top secret. So he got in the context of a mission, which I was really, I mean, this blew up my mind, really. And then he even went further to have it like this. So this is the text. Now, what do I have to do as a teacher? Well, he had it right over here. He says, agent, he called me an agent because we're in a mission. And he says, in order to deceive the code, copy and paste the following into the link. So now he's given me the link in which I can copy and paste all of this information. And actually there, there's the text. Isn't this great? I mean, I was not expecting at all that these guys will take, you know, they, that they will go the extra mile. To, to make it look like an actual mission. So I was really happy when I ran into this type of, of, of text. Now, yes, not all of the students did it this way. Uh, some of them went, you know, just the usual way, just typing their uh, letter here on Schoology, which is the, the platform which I used uh, to deliver uh, homework and stuff. But some of them, did it this way or they did something different like another guy and i think we can achieve all these uh, uh, things little by little we can cover different types of the students uh, with gamification all right 
So Powtoon, yes, it's uh, there is a, a paint version, but there's a free version that will allow you to do this, and it's great. Trust me. Okay. Now, escape rooms. All right, so escape rooms. In here, we, uh, according to Mora and Santos, it says that escape room, uh, some people call it breakout rooms. Uh, these are a game, uh, it's a game experience that challenges participants to leave a room where they are locked to accomplish that they must overcome a variety of set uh, of tests and challenges in order to find the exit or um, to exit the door key. Okay, so pretty much they are in a place and by completing different tasks or different tests um, and so on, they might be able to exit this room. Now, this is something that I recently discovered, and this is the thing that I have not used just yet. I'm trying to see how can I how I can implement it. Uh, but I've been working on one of these escapes rooms um, that I uh, that I found on the internet. So what I'm going to show you next, I did not create it. Well, the content, some of the content I created it, but this is uh, an actually an, an actual template that was made with a platform that is called Geniali. All right, Geniali, it's a great platform. If you don't know it, give it a shot. Uh, again, I have the free version. I have the free version, but there are uh, plenty of templates that you can use um, in the free version. All right, so what is it that you can do in, uh, in Geniali? You can have presentations, which are uh, very interactive. Uh, infographics, it says here gamification. I haven't explored these just yet. Uh, interactive images, video presentations, guides, and so on. So there's um, there are many things that Geniali offers, okay? And now, uh, the one that I'm going to show you right now, which is, um, this is a template uh, of, um, of escape room that was made uh, Geniali creators or designers along with another platform that is called Sandbox, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Um, the authors themselves, they, they encourage us teachers to share it. They say, they say share this um, template so, so teachers can use them and stuff. So I'm going to show you the template right now, but I will, sh I will send it to you on, on a PDF file as well. Uh, so I'm I'm going to 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 send it over to to the people from from the Congress so they can share it with you guys uh, because the only thing that you have to do is to register on Geniali um, and once you have this this um, uh, account whenever you click in the link that I'm going to send you which is the template uh, of the escape room then you will be able to modify it any way you want you change you can change the background you can change the questions you can change the uh, the rewards the cards everything and anything or if you want just to modify some stuff that's just fine now I'm showing you I'm going to show you right now some of the stuff that I've done on it again it's not finished just yet and I haven't applied it yet, but I will, okay? Um, so let me present it here for you. So in this breakout room, what I have is a map, okay? So it's, um, I'm thinking about, um, uh, conditional, zero conditional, first, second, and third conditional. Okay, so you just go on play and then you have the instructions. It says, would you be able to complete this challenge? Now we have a challenge here. We have, um, uh, in, in terms of the, of the framework, uh, it, maybe this is augmentation because it, yes, it's a little bit like substitution, but it, it's enhanced, it's improved. It, it offers you a little bit more than just a substitution of a task, right? So it says to complete the challenge, you will collect five cards and your knowledge will help you to get them, right? So this is kind of like the, the challenge. I think some of them might get excited about it. Now, five cards that I created Again, I'm going to send you a link 
in which you can create badges or cards and you can personalize them. You can have pictures of whatever. I think I did it with uh, characters from Street Fighter. And the final card is a picture or a picture of a, uh, of a cartoon of myself. Uh, again, you can change all of these, of course. So I, the cars that are here, I design on them, okay? So as you can see, we have a progress bar, okay? So there's another thing that it's an, an element for gamification. You have rewards, which are going to be the cars, and then you have the different challenges. So they have to complete all five challenges in order to have the final car, which will give them a prize. So let's take just a quick look of how this works. So challenge one, it says, if I finish the game quickly, then they have to complete it obviously with some type of conditional. Uh, so it says, I'll, I'll get a surprise, okay? So here we can see that here we have the first card, okay? I created this card. Again, you can personalize these cards with uh, a web page that I, that I will send you. So now, click here to see your cards. Now we can see that this person has the first card and four more to go before getting the prize, which is right over here. So they have to go back to the map, which is right over here. So the order doesn't really affect anything. So it is an unreal situation in the past. So let's say that this is wrong. First conditional. This is no puede ser, no hay seriedad. Okay, so this is just a meme. Uh, let's go back to the questions. Actually, all of the incorrect answers, um, they have a meme, which, you know, students might be more engaged if they find memes in, in their tasks. So unreal situations in the past, this should be a third conditional. And there we have the second card. Again, they go to the cards and you can see now they have the fifth one, three more to go. Let's do it real quick just to get through it. If we had more time to do this, we'd take a quick look to our notes. There we have next reward, number two. And it's right over here. Let's go for the next one. So we can have all of the numbers. You wouldn't have played this game if you had skipped this class. There it is, mission accomplished. Let's take a look at the words and one more to go. And as you can see, every time that you get a card, you also get a number for you to get the prize. So let's go for the last one. Number four, unreal situations in the presence that should be second conditional. And that's the last one. So let's take a look at the reward. And now you are able to click in the prize, but here you need this number. Every number is different because there are, let's say, they will give you random numbers. They will give random student ra random numbers to each of the students, okay? So it says 50, 51, 8. 50, 51, 8. And it says open. And let's see what's the price. And it says the Supreme Court. So the price, the price for you is an extra 10 minutes in the exam. This is just an example. Obviously you can do different things. You can have different awards for these. Um, you can uh, have even like, oh, you can cancel three different questions from the test or you can have uh, 10 extra minutes of break, whatever. I mean, this is up to you. All of the things that you want to do with this breakout room or from this escape room, they're all up to you. But I do believe this is a great way to engage students uh, into probably revising, I mean, um, uh, checking or going through different topics or, uh, or new ones. So again, I'm going to share with you um, specifically the, the link for this um, escape escape room. And I'm, I'm going to attach to that another link in which the creators of this will explain you how to go over the different things for you to modify it your way. All right, we're almost finished. But I don't want to leave before talking to you about video games. Now you can implement video games in the classroom um, 
and I ran into a video in, video game creator, which is free. Again, there is a paid version, but all of these are free. Everything that I've done is for free, okay? And uh, I decided to give it a try. Uh, it was um, <laughs> uh, it was a great thing that whenever I run into this um, uh, platform, it says that I I didn't need to know anything about programming, which I was like, that's great because I'm not really good at any of the things that I had related to computers or to technology, but, but everything that it's uh, here, the, the things that I've shown you before, they're really easy to use. And if I can do it, you can do it as well. All right, so um, the platform that I'm talking to you about, it's a video game creator that is called RPG Playground. So if you go to rpgplayground.com, then you will see that uh, this is a very easy to use platform in order for you to create a video game. You can uh, have your setting, you can have your different characters, uh, you can add like a house or whatever to go to different levels. Um, I've done this with students from seventh semester in the university because I teach at a university and they loved it. They loved it. I mean, even though this might fall into the category of, of substitution or probably augmentation because it's a little bit more than just substitution. This is probably augmentation. Uh, so even though that is just augmentation, they, they, they really liked it. All right, so what is it that I did with these guys? I created a mission and I created different um, uh, places that they had to go through in this village. And um, when they interact with the characters, you can see the dialogues, okay? And I had the different characters. Uh, the different characters were different teachers from the university that, it, that they are familiar with. So that was a plus for them. Like, oh, I went into this house and I found uh, Miss Pontino or things like that. So let me show you real quick. This is it. I call it mission possible. Okay, and here I have the instructions. Uh, the character is the panda bear, and he's right next to a person that looks like a Zorro. Uh, so whenever, that's the first person that he needs to be in contact with, so we can follow kind of like the instructions that are up there, but still, you know, just so they don't get loose. So I think whenever I start moving, even there's some music playing. Let's take a look. It says, hello, hello, Kiro. I'm Mr. Licona, which is supposed to be me. And I have a mission for you. What is the mission? You must collect all emphatic phrases. Oh, I think it will be easy. It's not as easy as you may think. There are many obstacles to reaching knowledge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and he says, you will have to defeat creatures and laziness too. <laughs> How do I do that? All right, so they go over the conversation, what they have to do and everything. He says, thank you. And off they go. So here we have different creatures, animals. There is some um, people that, some creatures that you might want to take out of the way so you can get into the different places. And here there's a person that welcomes you. And again, there's a conversation. So you know what you have to do. All right, so in this case, we were looking for the person at the very end of the room. All right, and off we go. Now we get right over here, and there it is. All right, so this is a great way to engage your students into something different using a video game. Um, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can do with a video game creator. You can have uh, students uh, create their own video game, maybe. Uh, and, and I think that that will be a great idea. They, they will get to choose their avatars to have the narrative of their own story. Or you can do a video game for them to play. Now, this is really, really easy to um to create again, you don't you do not need to know about programming. Basically, you just have like a template, and then you have options like uh, create a house, and then I 
have a dog here and a chicken right over here. It's really easy to, to use. I do not have the time to explain to you in detail how is it done, but for sure, again, I will send an attached file in which you will find, um, I think there's a YouTube video in which uh, it is explained how you can do these different things. It's still, you can just go into uh, rpgplayground.com and just kind of like start um, working it out yourself, try, trying things to see how it works. But I'm telling you, I'm not good at technology and I did it and it's not that hard really. I mean, it's not hard at all. Yes, it is a little bit time consuming because beforehand you need to know the story. What is it that you want to show and how do you want to represent it in the, in the video game? But it's totally worth it, okay? So I think I have... Uh, I'm just writing of, of, of in the limits in, in the limit of, of, of the time. So I, I would like to thank you. I, I really appreciate um, you being here. I hope that all of this information is useful for you. Um, here's my email in case you 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 want to hit me up uh, to make some questions or if you want me to send you directly the document with. Um, with all of this uh, information, with all of these links, I can send you the link for uh, um, the uh, video game creator, the um, the tutoring, the tutorial for uh, the video game, the tutorial for the escape room, the link of the escape room, uh, anything and everything that you need and that I that, and that I can help you with, I will. So Milton underscore Licona at yh dot edu dot mx. That should be my email. Uh, thank you very much again. Thank you to the university for having me over and hopefully I will get to see you soon.